everybody how's it going uh, welcome back I hope things went really good for you last week and um, I'm glad you're here this week uh, today in God's redemptive story um, the I hope that everybody's got their bookmarks and they're using them because um, the passage uh, that is supposed to be covered is uh, Genesis chapter 2 15 through chapter 3 verse 23 so it's it's a decent chunk for everybody to be capturing or reading throughout the week, but if they're doing the, the work ahead of time, reading ahead of time, I think it's really going to pay off in your discussion time. So I encourage everybody to do that. Uh, if you don't have bookmarks, you can go online and download them. Uh, and uh, the website uh, and the link is listed at the bottom of the screen right there. Uh, or you can grab them uh, from me uh, at church on Sunday. So anyways, uh, on to uh, the story. So where we're at in God's Word uh, is is um, we're actually at a real a turning point in man's relationship with God uh, and the reason why redemption is even needed in the first place. You know, often when this story is told, uh, the focus is on the fall and the broken relationship with God. And, you know, I would encourage you to, to cover that, absolutely, but emphasize the incredible mercy and grace that is shown by a holy God. That's the emphasis I would place on this story. And uh, also, don't miss the promise, the prophecy of the Messiah. We'll see if you can find it. So the hook question, uh, I would go ahead and, and just answer. It's really simple. It's share a time when you were a kid and did something that you knew you weren't supposed to do. Did you get busted? What happened? Uh, who doesn't have a story <laughs> about about something you did when I was a kid? So I, I think this question is really good. It's fun. It gets people talking. So, so for transition time, before the story is told in group, I'd I'd recap, or you could have someone read Genesis two fifteen through twenty five uh, out loud, uh, and then I'd say something like this: um, Notice that God had given a specific command to Adam. Also notice God's concern for Adam's relational state. Our story last week left us with Adam, Eve, and God in a perfect relational state. Okay, here's the story from God's word. The serpent was more, the most cunning and shrewd of all the animals that God had made. It approached Eve one day and asked her a question. Did God really say that you mustn't eat any of the fruit from the trees? You know, Eve responded, of course not. We can eat any fruit we like, except, for, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're not even supposed to touch it or we'll die. You won't die, the serpent said. God is hiding the fact that when you eat that fruit, you'll become like God. Eve eyeballed the tree and its fruit, and she desired to become like God. And the fruit looked pretty darn good. So she took some and ate it. Then she shared it with Adam. He, he ate it also. They realized at that moment that something was different. But not what they expected. They were ashamed because they, were wearing, they weren't wearing clothes. And they tried to cover it up. But they still had this nagging feeling of shame. And God came into the garden to hang out with them, but they were hiding. They were hiding from God. He called for them. And Adam admitted to being afraid of God because he was naked. And God asked him, who told you you were naked? Had you been eaten from that tree I told you not to? And Adam, he tried to pass it off to Eve, saying, she gave it to me. And Eve tried to pass it off onto the serpent. He tempted me. So the serpent the serpent didn't say anything. He didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> God cursed the serpent. You will crawl on your belly. I will make sure there is always bad blood between your kids and the offspring of that woman. He will crush your head, but you will bruise his heel. God told Eve, that she will know pain during pregnancy and childbirth. She would also desire to be the boss of the house, but her husband will be the boss. 
Then lastly, God told Adam, since you chose not to listen to me, you will have to work hard to survive, and you will die and return to the dirt from which you were brought from. God gave them some clothes from his animal skins to wear and sent them out of the garden. And that's the story from God's word. Now, I would go ahead and, as always, reconstruct it together. And remember, go ahead and get them started in the right direction and, uh, and then read it together. Uh, and uh, during the reading time, um, make sure that you point out um, uh, Genesis 3, 15. That's kind of the promise of the Messiah that's hidden in there. Uh, the big four questions are the same. I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about them, but what do we learn about God in this story? Lots of conversation there about that. What do we learn about uh, man and ourselves in the story? You could probably get, you could actually get stuck on this question if you tried real hard. Um, I see, I see my rebellion every day, uh, just like Adam, you know, and so I could get stuck in this question. Maybe you guys could too. What'd you learn new in this story, and uh, or personally? And then the last question, number four, what should I do differently because of this story? Um, the extra questions this week are pretty good. Um, was God's judgment on Adam and Eve really about eating fruit or something else? Uh, it'd be fun to kick that around in group for a little while and see what comes out. Second question is, give an example of God's grace or mercy from the passage. Um, it's huge, actually. Uh, they didn't die right then. Did they? No. They died spiritually, not physically. So some really good discussion there too. And then discuss the curse uh, on the serpent. And this is really intended to highlight the promise of the Messiah. He will crush the serpent's head, but the serpent will bruise the Messiah's heel. And we see that in Jesus' uh, death and resurrection. I'm moving on to the next page, and I'm going to skip things to do between group right now because I want to point something out in the memory verse for the week. It's actually the fulfillment of uh, the prophecy found in Genesis 3.15 in Galatians 4, 4 through 6. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Um, that born of a woman, in the, actually in the King James, talks about the seed of the woman. And uh, it, um, in Galatians, it says seed of woman. So that it's a direct correlation uh, to that prophecy being fulfilled. Uh, I hope you guys are paying attention to the uh, things to do between groups. I really want to encourage you to do that and share uh, with each other. You know, if you're praying for people or, or what, um, talk about that. Uh, and this week, it's it's similar. Just basically call someone from the group this week and ask them how you can pray for them. What a very what a it's a super valuable uh, time spent, well well spent on the phone with someone and praying for them. Uh, spend some time reflecting on what it means to have a broken relationship with God. And then what it means to have it restored through Christ. And write down your thoughts. You know, definitely worth doing. So, hope you guys have another great week. I hope things are going well for your group. Uh, don't forget to um, let me know if you have any questions or feedback on these videos. Uh, I'm making them for you, not for me. So, I'm happy to do what you need to help you prep and be more effective. So, uh, God bless you guys. Have a great week. And I'll see you soon.